Hi modelers, it's Chris the Modeler at ABR Model Works and welcome to the video to do with sealing your baseboard. Now sealing your baseboard is really important and it doesn't really matter what type of timber you're using. If you don't seal it, you run the risk of water penetration and even mold growing depending on where you live in the world. So MDF is well known for expanding if it gets wet. Now the surface of an MDF sheet does take a bit of water to get it to penetrate the surface itself, but on the edges where it's being cut, it will absorb moisture quite quickly. Now having said that, in the laser cutting process, the burning part of the process actually helps to seal that edge. So it's, it's probably about the same as the surface itself. So small drops and spills aren't really a big deal. It's the longevity that I'm interested in, in terms of how long your baseboard is going to last you. So here are a few tips and ideas on how I believe you should go about doing it, really regardless of where you live. But if you live in particular cities that are prone to dampness and, and moisture uh, and mold growing, then you really need to do this. Now, given that in the model railway hobby, we use lots of white glue and diluted glue and there's lots of water goes onto your baseboard. And so sealing those little gaps and, and areas where water could penetrate is particularly important, especially given that if you're doing anything like adding plaster or any of those types of materials that will absorb moisture over time, uh, you want to make sure these, these little gaps could be uh, sealed well. So I think the best thing to do is to start by adding a small amount of extra glue to any of those areas. So for example, on the top of the baseboard where we've got the uh, ribs underneath penetrating through and the sides connecting, the, there are little potentially little gaps. So my suggestion is, is that you smear a little bit of glue into each of these spots and a little bit along the sides and then underneath and probably I should have thought about this a little bit more to be truthful with you but probably it'd be a good idea to add a little bit of extra glue on the joints themselves. It's not from a strength point of view it's just from a sealing point of view. Again, again given that you know in the hobby we do add a lot of watered down white glue and, and, uh, and lots of moisture and so that's going to sit for quite some time and the capillary action is such that it will then you know, soak past whatever's there. So again, sealing that in the first place I think is a good idea and like I say, I don't believe it really matters on whether you're working with an MDF product or you're working with a plywood um, or any other timber for that matter. The better that you seal it, the longer your baseboard is going to last. And let's face it, there's not so much actual dollar cost involved in purchasing your, your baseboard in whichever style you go with. It's the time investment. You know, you literally spend hours and hours. So you really do want this to last as long as possible. Yeah, once you're happy that you've done that, then of course the next stage is to uh, paint the baseboard with a good quality sealing primer. And so it doesn't really matter what type that you use. I've chosen to go with uh, British Paints 4-in-1 um, for no particular reason other than in my investigation in talking to some professional painters and paint supply stores. This style of, of paint from a ceiling point of view is what they came up with as being the best for what we need. Now I did actually consider using a varnish because I would have thought that you know this would look quite nice on the sides etc with a varnish. But the reason why I've not gone down that path is that the advice that I was given from one of the varnish manufacturers was, was that in fact you know, gluing things to the varnish surface may not necessarily hold long term. So I've chosen not to go with that. So at the end of the day, I'm going to put this white paint on as a sealer and then I will apply uh, whatever color I want as an undercoat so that um, the scenery doesn't come through, so a nice dirt colour or something like that. And then on the sides, uh, I haven't decided what colour I'm going to paint it, but I'll paint the sides. So I'm actually considering 
something like a, a rusty brown so it looks like you know rusted steel as a sort of a, a steel type of structure so that's basically what I'm going to do I'm going to start now by all of my baseboards and I've got a few to do I'm um, going around applying the glue uh, in uh, on all of these surface areas um, the little joints on the sides and uh, inside I'll then give it a good 24 hours to dry I'll, um, I'll come over it lightly with a sanding block just to take any high spots off so that um, you know when I, I lay rail and putting things down I don't have any bumps and then I will start with the painting process which I'll very um, liberally add you know a, quite a good layer of paint on the inside underneath especially on the joints and especially um, on these joints where they penetrate through to the top so I want to make sure that has a good coating of paint now I'm not going to be overly fussy about the finish um, I, I want a good layer of paint so probably a good thick layer or a good couple of layers of paint underneath on the top um, I obviously I want that to be nice and smooth in the sides and I'll probably just use a roller and put a couple of coats on with a roller to uh, to give me a good sealing coat especially given that I'm going to be then painting it with something else as far as the color is concerned so that's the process that I'll go through and uh, I'll come back and show you what I've done in the gluing process and then once I've painted it I'll uh, I'll then talk a little bit more about that and then and the last thing I'm going to cover is that when you join the two baseboards together in, in a situation where you're bolting them together because of the paint um, there's a good possibility that they could stick so I'm going to show you how I'm going to solve that problem okay so sealing the top now given that this is probably the most important area to cover I thought I'd just quickly do some and show you how I'm going to go about it so simply using some Gorilla Glue I will smear some down and then with my finger I'm going to force it into those those gaps so that there's a a good chance that I'm getting a good seal there run along do a bit of a batch and then just work it in making sure that there's a no little holes and just go back over it and check it and the same thing for the sides I'll just work it in making sure that I've filled the gaps as much as possible being careful not to get too much running down the sides uh, remembering of course that you know you can always come back and give it a little bit of a sand before you put the paint on um, but wipe as much of it away as you can it's the it's the getting it into those little grooves that's the uh, the critical part that'll aid in the sealing process so that's basically what I'm going to be doing to all of my baseboards on the top side and underneath I'll simply squirt in a good glob of glue and again just use my finger and get, get a you know a nice fillet of glue along that gap and that'll do the job okay so about 20 minutes later I now have the top surface all glued uh, inside all glued etc um, and I'm quite happy with the whole thing what I'll probably do is let it settle a little bit more and just go over maybe a few spots on the tops I'm not really that bothered about underneath it's plenty of glue there but uh, as the glue dries and it shrinks there may be a couple of little holes that might appear so I might just put a couple of extra spots quick tip on doing the sides uh, I just ran a bead along the top and then using my finger I scrubbed it into both the top and the side and of course don't forget to do the uh, the corners but uh, but that's basically it it's done um, essentially now I'll just check it in maybe half an hour and add a little bit more if I need it uh, if not um, it'll be dry enough in the morning so um, about 24 hours later uh, I'll give it a very light sand just to remove any high spots um, and then I'll uh, paint it okay so we're now back at the bench not only with our undercoated baseboards 
but painted baseboards as well. Now at the end of the last section of the video I was getting ready to paint the undercoat on the baseboards which I did. We painted the baseboards with a nice white and unfortunately for me at least anyway and maybe a good thing for you guys is that I'm really running out of time to get all this ready for a model railway display in a few weeks time so I've got an awful lot to do because really all I have right now is these two and a couple of other baseboards that are painted to this stage so now let me explain to you how we got to this stage and the fact that I actually ended up spraying it painting the inside with a paintbrush was a little bit more tedious than what I first expected and took a, a um, quite a bit more time than what I first expected. Now my initial thoughts about possibly spraying, I was concerned that I wouldn't get, it, get the paint on wet enough for it to really stick. If I was using a normal air-based spray gun, then that's potentially a problem and you wouldn't get that nice thick layer that I was looking for to protect them against water. But what I ended up doing after painting the white, I went out and bought an electric spray gun. Uh, just a cheap uh, Zito brand from Bunnings, cost me about $50. Is it good? Well, for actually doing what I'm doing, it's not too bad. It doesn't really spray, <laughs> more like splatters paint on. So if you're painting a large fence or something like that where you don't mind a bit of orange peel, this is probably quite good. Now for me it didn't matter too much because I'm actually going to be stippling the outside so it looks like it's rust. But the concept that I'm going for, or the look rather that I'm going for is, is that you know old steel rusty girder type look as far as the edges of the baseboard are concerned. So it's actually going to come up looking quite nice. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. What was really good about it was that the painting process was so much faster. These two, just to do the undercoating, took a good hour and a half, maybe, maybe a little longer for the pair of them. And I've got a lot to do. Spraying them was very quick. Um, I sprayed the coats of brown on the four um, pieces in, uh, in about the same time. So it saved a, a quite a bit of time. It goes on very heavy. On the flat surfaces, that's all fine. I do have a bunch of runs in a few spots that aren't too bad, but they're you know not great um, on the sides because you have to water down the paint quite a bit to get it to spray. But for me, that's not really going to matter because, like I say, I'm going to be stippling you know different colours all over this so that it has that rusty steel look. The colour I chose was from the Tordman's range, it's Wine Barrel. Uh, and it's sort of a, a milky chocolate uh, type colour for those of you um, who can't get hold of the Tordman's uh, paints in your particular country. Now one of the things that I spoke about earlier in the video is right now I need to get on with this. And if I were to bolt these two together, They'd be as good as glued. They'd, they'd be there permanent. And of course, that's not what I want. So in the framing industry, there is this release paper that on the inside of it, so the outside where all the lines are for them to use as a grid for cutting out that foam board, um, on the inside, it's a very waxy surface. And so what I'm going to do is I'll fold this into two so that the wax surface is up against the painted area and I'll put two pieces sandwiched in like so. Um, I'll just trim it back with a razor blade so that it's quite close to the surface and then I'll be able to you know paint across it um, and do the scenery and it will come apart without any problem at all because this material just you can't you can't glue to it it's also good to use if you were making uh, little grass tufts and things like that lots of people use wax papers and those sorts of materials 
this is a really good um, product for doing that type of thing and the best part about it is it's absolutely free because most of the framers will just throw out sheets and sheets of this uh, and so I'm sure that if you go to your local frame shop and um, ask them for it they'll give it to you and let you, and let you go through their uh, their bins to, uh, to get out the material that you need. So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut some of this up I'm going to make up a couple of pieces to go into each of the joints. Sorry, bolt the baseboards together. So I hope this clears up a few things as far as the processes around sealing and getting your baseboards ready to start to add the buildings and all the scenery. Getting into that, that fun part. So that now wraps up this video. Um, I hope I've covered the sealing of the baseboard well enough. Um, it is a fairly simple process. Basically just get the paint on. Once you've done that, you can get into the fun stuff and, and uh, laying your rail and building the buildings and doing all the scenery, which I'm thoroughly looking forward to. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so and ring the bell so you get notifications on new videos as they come available. I'm Chris the Modeler at ABR Model Works. Have a great day modeling. <music>